this has to be one of the prettiest villages in Suffolk. <clears throat> We're in the village of Boxted and just up ahead on my right is a rather special garage which we'll go and have a little look at in a second. The architecture here is largely from the 17th and 16th centuries. A lot of timber framing, some Georgian facades. Colour wash elevations, lime render. Leaded windows. Simply stunning. We'll have a little drive through. What I think I'll do is I'll move the camera to the front so you can have a look, change the camera angle. So in terms of the architectural styles in this village, uh, this offers such an amazing variety. We've actually got these castellated gables off to our left, or crow step gables as they used to be called. We've got uh, colour wash brick face elevations, and as I was saying earlier, the lime plaster elevations. These wonderful little bow windows, pargeting in the render. The heart of Boxted is utterly, utterly beautiful. And in spite of the fact that it's sort of on the road between Hadley and Sudbury, which is our next destination, it isn't one of the better known tourist destinations in Suffolk. Um, but it's well worth a visit uh, if you get the chance to come here. So morning everyone, welcome to uh, another episode of A County for All Cars and you join me today in the 
beautiful Suffolk village of Boxford, uh, which lies uh, between Hadley and Sudbury, which is going to be our next destination. Um, I think the reason why we're here is evident in the film footage that you've probably just seen. The reason we're on this journey is a very personal one and this episode is really all about um, heroes and uh, I'm going to sort of pay my respects to one of my own heroes uh, at a little village called Cavendish which is just on the other side of uh, the market town of Sudbury. But while we're here in Boxford I thought I'd show you a garage which belongs to Howard Watts uh, who is sort of well known within the uh, classic car community and uh, we won't be able to see much because it's a Sunday morning and the place is shut but uh, I'll give you a little bit of a uh, tour if I can and uh, you know it's maybe somewhere you want to come and visit yourself. Um, the other thing I should just say is uh, for uh, some of my more local followers um, my plan is to hold a little uh, meet up on the 16th of June uh, so this is 16th of June 2024 and um, I will leave some details in the comments section of this video in terms of time and venue and an email address you can contact me. So Saturday the 16th of June if you want to come along and join me be very welcome and I look forward to seeing you then. Anyway let's have a look at Howard's uh, garage. So sort of right in the centre of a village, um, you can see I've managed to get myself parked next to the uh, petrol pumps, but you've got this wonderful sort of workshop. Um, there are all sorts of interesting cars here. So uh, we've got uh, a number of Porsches. Uh, there's uh, a Mini, classic Mini from the 1990s sort of parked up at the end here. Um, and then you've got this sort of fabulous workshop. now. I don't think you can see what's inside here, which is a shame because of the camera, but uh, there are a number of early 911s um, parked in the workshop uh, waiting for servicing. And um, just coming down the far end here, um, in the showroom window, we've got an early uh, E-Type Jaguar. Uh, a tantalizing glimpse of Ferrari and uh, again on the forecourt one or two more interesting affordable classics I would say here. So what we'll do uh, we'll we'll jump in Tess head off towards Sudbury. I'll give you a little bit of a tour around Sudbury and then we'll uh, talk a little bit about uh, uh, one of the heroes in my life that I want to uh, go and sort of pay tribute to. Moving on to the B1071 and um, as you saw in uh, one of my previous vis uh, visits to Lavenham, this area is synonymous uh, with the wool trade uh, during the medieval part of uh, England's history and so we have this rolling landscape which I think is sort of perfect in a sense of a kind of lush pasture that was needed uh, to raise sheep and of course hills are notoriously difficult to grow crops on uh, particularly without machinery because trying to plough them is a problem and also things like water runoff becomes an issue as well. The great thing about rolling landscapes is uh, you get rolling roads and 
this is going to be one of my favourites. And uh, as you probably guessed by now, we're in Tess, the 1967 2-litre Mark 1. And uh, Tess loves roads like this. We're in top gear, into overdrive. And we're just this side of legal. Sunday morning, pretty much everyone on a day like this at the weekend is heading to the beach. We are going in the opposite direction because the roads are empty on our side of the county. Um, in the rear view mirror I've just been picked up by what appears to be a motorcycle club and they're going to come past me right now. One, two, if they want to. I'll let them go. Katie's Mrs. Chance. <laughs> We've got one left at the back. The particular hero I'm coming to visit today holds a particularly personal resonance with me and he's no longer with us um, he died I suppose about 20 years ago but he was one of the most remarkable Englishmen of the 20th century and he was a man that lived two lives in his first life he left public school and was destined for an academic career a lot of people think or potentially a career in the law um, just about the time that uh, war broke out he was a keen pilot and naturally decided to join the RAF and the RAF in their wisdom sent him to Bomber Command. Now we're just going to come into Sudbury Town Centre here and uh, we'll have a look at little look at the architecture. Anyway, our bomber pilot ended up being awarded the Victoria Cross for valour during the war, having flown a record 100 combat missions. And that takes some thinking about actually. But he's not my hero because of his Victoria Cross and what he did in the war, or his contribution to aeronautical research. He's my hero 
because of what he did after the war. And we'll come on to that in a moment. But for now, let's have a little look at Sudbury. So Sudbury again is one of these Suffolk mill towns uh, built on the banks of a river Stour and during the 16th, 17th, 18th and 19th centuries it was something of a commercial powerhouse in Suffolk, sitting right on the uh, Suffolk and Essex border. And it's certainly vibrant, famous for being the home of one of East Anglia's greatest artists, Gainsborough. And we're actually not that far from uh, Dedham here, which of course we looked at in one of my previous videos, which was home to John Constable. again is an example of the Georgianization of old buildings. And again, some of the houses we're passing, they've got colour wash elevations, but the walls are made out of rubble. Again, just an indication of the ingenuity of builders to use whatever materials they could find uh, to build with. And then there are these interesting little dormer windows on some of the houses, some of them being flat dormers, some of them pitched. The timber frame sort of gives the impression of the dormers sagging into the uh, roof spaces. sort of kind of uh, higgledy-piggledy cottages and houses that you see in uh, storybooks. Again, extensive use of flint hair in this building. Again, cheap to get hold of. Everlasting. Again, it, examples of this sort of jettied architecture here. And uh, just here we're about to cross the, uh, the river. see we're now leaving um, Sudbury and we're heading out on the A134 in the direction of Bury St Edmunds but actually what we're going to do is to go through Long Melford to the village of Cavendish which I mentioned earlier and uh, we'll talk more about this uh, great hero of mine. So if you missed my um, video on Long Melford, uh, which was done earlier this year, um, here's another chance to have a look at uh, the High Street. 
I think I'm right in saying it counts as one of the longest high streets in England. Um, we're going to go left through the uh, village green. And on to the A1092 at Morris Minor. And another one. Bridget. So we're just coming into the Suffolk village of Cavendish and this again is one of the most beautiful villages on the sort of western or southwestern side of the county. And you'll see as we go through, there's a huge sort of mixture of architectural styles. We've got thatch, timber framing, brick. These little uh, workers' cottages nestled against these sort of larger medieval former hall houses. Examples of Suffolk pink colour schemes. And uh, a fantastic uh, village green. We're going to park up by the green in a little while. Just give you another drive through with the uh, camera mounted in the front. For many people, this is a quintessentially English country scene. And apart from the cars, it has hardly changed in 200 years. turn around at this uh, wonderful timber frame house and I think we'll park in the shade So the reason we're in Cavendish is to visit the final resting place of this hero of mine. And having flown his 100 missions, which included leading the Pathfinder squadrons of mosquitoes during the war in an attempt to make uh, 
bombing more effective and accurate and actually to try to save the lives of uh, his uh, comrades flying uh, Lancasters mainly. Um, he rose the rank of group captain and then left the RAF after the war where he set up a charity which is known throughout the world as the Cheshire Homes and Leonard Cheshire is someone who found a second life after his war career and he built a life in the service of other people along with the woman he married uh, Sue Ryder uh, or Baroness Ryder of Warsaw as she became and together they lived and worked in this village in Cavendish, uh, literally above a shop, um, above the shop, <laughs> uh, in the, what was the, one of the Sue Ryder homes here. And they established between them a third charity, um, which was the Cheshire Ryder Foundation, which was involved in the relief of suffering in third world countries. So Leonard's discovery of himself and the start of his second life as a humanitarian began with the experience of hands-on nursing. And for me, this has inspired some of the choices that I've made uh, in the last couple of years of my life. This week for me represents the end of a 12 month journey of self-discovery in my work as a reablement support worker for uh, the Suffolk County Council looking after uh, people who have come out of hospital in a sort of hands-on way which is sort of very hard for me to imagine in my former life. And I've been privileged to work with some of the most wonderful humanitarian, most wonderfully compassionate, empathic people that I've ever met. And they get up every morning, go to work, they're underpaid, they're undervalued, and what they do, they do for frankly love, I think. And I think it has been one of the most humbling experiences of my life to be a part of this. I don't think, frankly, I would have become a part of that process had it not been for reading Leonard Cheshire's biography. And being fortunate enough as a 14 year old to meet the man himself briefly uh, as a way of personal declaration my own father had the privilege of working for Leonard and Sue Ryder for their uh, charity and I know what a significant impact that had on dad's life and his outlook on the world and even though Leonard's no longer with us, the power of his story has informed my own life and my direction and what in a few weeks time will be yet another chapter in my life as I change careers within the world of caring and counselling and active listening. But in the meantime, just over there is the little village cemetery where Leonard now rests and uh, I'm going to go over there and pay my own private respects. Um, thank you for joining me on this uh, drive through Suffolk. Um, I hope you enjoyed the uh, drive on the roads and uh, I hope you get the chance to come and have a look at uh, this part of Suffolk. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, have a look at the comment section at the end of this 
uh, for more details on the social meetup and uh, road run if you want to join me um, on the 16th of June. Look forward to it. Uh, otherwise, I'll see you in my next video. Anyway, take care.